Hey, y'all. Dolls. Hi. Dolls. <laughs> Hi. Hey. We've got the doggies back together. The boys are back in town. I've got Mango restrained. His hand. When he, has, when he puts one paw on my stomach to, like, buffer, he's ready to pop <laughs> off. He is. Um, I just need to quick talk about my new renaissance with Below Deck. Okay. It's really the best show on television. You need to go immediately down under. <laughs> I know. Then, I've been needing to go down under. But and then head over to Sailing Yacht. It just seems like such a mountain to climb. It's It's really not, though. It's like so episodic. I know. I just feel like... My time is so limited and as is my attention span when Mm -hmm. it comes to watching something like I'm still working through this past season of the bear. And so that's where I can devote like an hour nightly, but like beyond an hour, it's really hard for me to watch two episodes of anything in a row. Yeah. Even last night I struggled because I watched the bear episode six where they have their big old Christmas. Oh, Jamie Lee. I know she really, she really said, Came to set and said, I'm serving cunt today. She said, I won the Oscar. And now, now watch this. Roar. She played it well. Yeah. And then I watched this episode of SLC later in the night, but my attention span was like, Mm-mm. they go, it's TikTok time only for you. I think there's something so regimented about Below Deck because it's like, it's such a, they have it, the formula down for every single episode so well. And it's like, they're organized. It's just soothing to watch people. Wait. I have a big question for you that I want to ask in a public forum because I want to hold you accountable. Do you, do you know if that producer that works for sailing yacht still works for sailing yacht? I don't know why I want you to reach out. You want to go on it? Yeah. I'm ready to throw some cash at a sailing yacht experience. And I feel like, I feel like it's a really good, show to be on no you know what it's in my twitter dms and i can't access it her email i know tell bring it up with x <sighs> literally what the fuck Tech, talk to elon well guess what we work we did a little work around we did <laughs> that's what we did guess who's back on twitter Carrie's back in Dole. a major way i was like how did I not think of this? Because it just never crossed I think it's my good mind. That we didn't think of it immediately. Yeah, needed, it would not I have been good to, to like, give you your drugs. Because I'm not really on it, even though I haven't really been like, like I've been on it for the last like two days, but I haven't really been like using it that much, mm-hmm. which is nice. Like yeah. I'm not checking it. I think I've like, I needed that those like three months to just like. You've been off it for three months? Almost three months. July doll. What is time? Time is. I have no concept of. Time is over. The strike is. is over. Time is over, and my Twitter is. But I realize there's a sexy, unique podcast Twitter, which everyone should follow because at I, sexy, unique pod on Twitter, and it's piping hot. The I'm one and the, only I'm the heat and the tea. Yeah, Carrie is now on it, and I was like, wait, this is actually perfect. It works great for the pod and great for you. It's a true win-win. And it's like there's a barrier. So it feels like safer and I don't feel as much pressure, (laughs) the pressure to perform. You also don't have to like, you can just be lol. I can just be lol and like not like the, my Twitter was starting to get like, I just get like, I would attract the biggest weirdos and like people just being like negging me and just, I was just like, no. And I think when you're on it for that long, you just, it just happens. This, I feel like there's a barrier and I don't feel the stakes are as high. So I'm just, you're bringing the heat, but it's also like, Come on over because we're doing some good things over there. Carrie's fucking serving. You're slaying the game on Twitter. I checked it once because I literally, the last time there's been like engagement was maybe 2018 or something. 2019. 2019. Yeah. So I like literally haven't checked it in years. And then I checked and I was like, oh, he went to work today. We're popping off. Yeah. But no, I, I, I'm going to try to track down this person because I, I really regret. I, I truly thought it was a scam at first. I, you just like weren't, you weren't in a place of accepting the gifts from the universe. But no. now also, if this person's listening, they might be a listener. Reach the fuck out. The fans, they want to see us on Sailing Yacht. I want to go on Sailing Yacht. And I want Carrie to go. We could pod live from the yacht. Using Starlink. 
And I, we, I would literally, it would be the biggest it'd lull be a coup. of the century if you and I showed up and we're just like being like for the group of fun friends yeah and like if our group because we wouldn't be crazy no we'd just be be like lollers and like make friends with everyone and we wouldn't make fools of ourselves which is like my biggest fear of being on that show is no you would not it would be amazing like a man on below deck down under had a seizure on at the dinner table and that freaked me out and i was <laughs> and even though he had no control over that i was like can you imagine i would be like please don't show this i know but they showed it anyway they showed I know. the raw and the real it's fine ultimately but at the time i i didn't have a relationship with blow deck so i didn't give a fuck and i was just like ah this one i don't know if this is real or not and then two like i don't want to go in some spinoff but little did you know. Little did I know. It's so... It's uh, And the boat is beautiful and huge. And they're in Corfu. <sighs> Corfu. That's what I need. I need to be in the Greek islands on a boat mm-hmm. ASAP. And like in Croatia. It's all about... It's all about being on a boat. It's all about That's being... That's what I realized from doing like seven hour, like a little boat day jaunt yeah. in Greece. I was like, wait. Boats are everything. Boats are life. When I was on Lake Life last week, I was on a boat all the time. And I I was just like, this is, there's nothing better than this. Boats are a vibe. Boats are a vibe, Dole. Um, also, really quick, I, one of the charter guests in a recent episode of Sailing Out was, they were part of this guy group. It was a guy trip. And they were literally the most wretched motherfuckers from Long Island that you could ever imagine. But one of them Strong was in the Island. Daily Mail because his grandfather was a billionaire who married like an Anna Nicole Smith type who, when he died, she locked um, the grandson that was on below deck and his family out of the fortune and evicted him, evicted his ass from one of the homes. Hell yeah. And she's like this, like, <laughs> she like makes movies. She funds movies. Oh my God. My her name's, queen. I'll, I'll show you her Instagram. You're going to be obsessed with her. And she apparently was like, like intentionally making the husband miss doctor's appointments when he was getting really ill and like fed him McDonald's and like was like kind of actively I'm trying obsessed. to care him. We need a show. <laughs> Her name's. This is truly dismantling the patriarchy one by one. And her- you marry an old rich man. And then, and then give his... them the best last five years of their lives. And then kill Expedite them. Expedite the last five years of their lives. And then... Block their entire family out of the generational fortune and start making some independent movies. She's just like... She wow. Was, I know. I'll, I'll, her name's Meadow Williams. Hats She's off. That's like radical activism. Yeah. But her Instagram is like chef's kiss. Okay. I'm excited. Um, but I wanted to also talk about Speaking of generational gaps, uh, Dane Cook. And Dane his- Cook is now engaged or married his longtime partner who is 24. They've I been mean, together for six years, but have met when she was 15. The sad thing is their maturity level is probably at the exact same spot, or she's like a little bit more mature than he is. He's 50? I guess so. She met. She's 20. I just love being describing a 24 year old as someone's longtime partner. <laughs> right? Is he the only man she's ever dated? I mean, I'm guessing she probably had like camp boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, summer camp boyfriends. Like, I don't know. I mean, what? I guess congrats for them. I hope that they have like a very equitable prenup. He claims that he married her or they started dating when she was 18. But he knew her since she was 15? Yeah. I mean, that's a little... It's a little European. A little dicey. That's a little... little Serge Gainsbourg. That's a little bit uh, <laughs> French. It's very French. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I guess if she's into it and she's getting something out of it... She wants to be someone's longtime partner. That's fine. I just like, what is with these like club comedians, like loving underage girls? Chris, th- it has Chris to be, Dillia. it's like a maturity, it's a maturity thing. And it's also like, if you're the younger you are as a woman, you don't understand what a fucking loser it move it is to be 50 and a com- stand up comedian 
and also Dane Cook, no less, and dating in that circle, like you are young enough to think that that's like cool or attractive. Like women my age or older or even really in their like 30s, are like well, we know not who Dane interested. Cook is. Yeah. We grew up with that motherfucker and we know what a tool he is. So someone who's young like her probably is like, oh. I think they really, a lot of times, men of that ilk only have the option of dating much younger because they are still like, ooh, who's this? But what's crazy is that he's going to be 70 when she's like, 35 is that math right or did i just girl math well so he's 24 he's 51 oh, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gay math he's basically like she he's gonna be an old dad he's gonna be like a he's da- again very european he's gonna be like an old da- he's gonna be like having children in his 70s his if okay so say i, don't I would di- i would this, get say with they a, have a child next year when she's 25 and he's like 51 mm-hmm. when that child graduates high school he'll be 70 yeah which like isn't crazy but it's crazy i can't even wrap my head around them i'm trying i'm literally the numbers lady with numbers meme but like i just know he's there's he's a big twice her age yeah but honestly my dad and stepmom were that far apart in age my first stepmom so it's a thing. <laughs> Best of luck to them. Um, I would date Dane a Cook st- sixty-year-old if yeah. they were like fresh. I think six-year-olds are hot now, mm-hmm. but like I think it's. But when I was like twenty, I wouldn't. That's a little them. inappropriate. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's a little inappropriate for someone to. I don't even want to talk about like the fifteen-year-old of it all, but like he went up to her when she was fifteen and went. My reputation's ever been worse, so <laughs> she, she must, must like, like me for me. me. So they met in a group. Why the fuck is a 15-year-old hanging out when... But I'd read online that he hung out with like lots of kind of younger... I'm telling it's truly the only women that are going to hang out and Guys, stick around. As friends. You got to go young because they think it's still kind of cool. They don't understand yet that... Y- it's loser vibes. Yeah. I mean, if we think about it, like Samantha was a little bit loser vibes hanging out with women. Smith Jared. Smith. No, like she was a good 10, 15 years older than her best friends. But that's because I think she had a young. Don't I bring know. Samantha into this conversation Listen, negatively. I'm not, I'm not she was her young. I'm, I'm making a joke about her. I love Samantha. I she was hit- young at heart and wanted to be around young women. Sometimes if you hang out with women your own age or just like people your own age as you get older, you're like, oh, this person's you reading. You don't have to defend Samantha's decisions. No, but you me. know, like you're like, oh, this person's reading old to me and their oldness is making me feel old. So I'm going to need like, to outsource and go young. Her libido and she was still going really. So- she was in many ways much younger than they were. Yeah, she was. But I'm just saying, I think with a guy, there's, there is such a thing of like guys being like wanting to like keep up with like 20 year olds as friends and as lovers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when you're a comedian and you were at the top of your game. I mean, he was like, (coughs) bless you, the the most famous comedian for a while, right? Yeah. And he was genuinely funny and hot for a second. Was he? I had a moment where I was like, well, I mean, I I, I thought he was cute, but like, was he funny? I listened in college, like literally when I was 22, 21, 22, would listen to his stand up specials and I would laugh and think it was funny. What was his like vibe again? Was it like just like. It was bro? like Tucker Max kind of vibes. Okay. But that's, again, I was 22 years old and I thought that that was funny. Mm-hmm. As like a, if I had been like 38, 39 then. You would have been like, I hate this man. I would have been like, I fucking want this person to die. <laughs> So like it all is like contextual and you know what? It probably won't last. So I hope that if they get, they've been long time partners. I know, but I hope that if they get divorced, she gets a ton of money and then it's like no harm, no foul. The best, that's the best case scenario. Blue beard. (laughs) It is a little like, or he like passes untimely, (laughs) 
maybe she's long she's long time partnered and helping feed him mcdonald's or like slowly poisoning him he must have a shit ton of money right probably i don't know i don't know what the i don't know what the balance sheet's looking like these days i've seen him do stand up at the comedy store in his middle age later years and it was puffy I can't think like it I'm was a r- cruel reminder triggered. of the aging process and how unkind it can be to certain people. I'm very triggered by it. when I drive by the laugh factory, I go <laughs> there's like headshot. Dane cook tonight. Yeah. It's a, he's around. Yeah. Like I think Polly shore is hotter than Dane cook. Yeah. What's he up to? I saw him at Starbucks. Okay, he's a he's haunting like he's like a WeHo sunset yeah. WeHo vibes. His mom ran that play like the, the comedy yeah, store. Yeah, so he's like I think he's just sort of like he's around wandering. But we strip. never hear much from him. And I would I, would I appreciate love, that. I would like to circle back. I think it's time that we could circle back. I appreciate that he hasn't done anything like problematic slash like cancelable. Like I feel like he didn't. I feel like so many of those comedians of that era, like Rob Schneider and all those people, like out like just became racist and like <laughs> bigots in their later years mm-hmm. and i think Polly shore has kept a low profile and like hasn't done anything bad that we know of that we know of maybe that's why he's keeping a low profile but who yeah knows? i would love i would like a circle back i loved Polly shore his, hottest his blair witch that like little known blair witch parody movie was the funniest movie i've ever seen <laughs> his run of comedies straight to home DV, straight to video comedy in the 90s were nothing short of genius in the army now jury duty biosphere biodome biodome encino man like he was the king he, he was, was the cool. king of the valley mm-hmm. would love like anything a comeback comeback it's a vehicle of some sort like i'm i'm ready i'd like him to do a stand-up special I'm just like, update us on what's going on. Did he do stand up? Is that where he came from? I think because of his mom. Yeah, I think he. Or he was just like in the mix of comedians. Yeah, I think he probably had some like leg up because of his family, but I think he did stand up. I am also like, anytime I see a stand up billboard in L.A., can they like make posters better for? stand-up specials they can't because it would cost too much money probably okay so they're like we'll do this in canva we'll have an intern do the make a canva we can't ask for much <laughs> the strike's over no but they're like in the next round of money strikes, they're like yeah. we have to pay writers now so canva it is for you the marketing materials you want money they can you rent photoshop or something mm. um Daily Mail polled if people would feel safer, if Americans would feel safer with Biden or Trump. What'd they say? If aliens attacked, 40%, 43% say Trump. Biden, 32%. What about the rest of the people? 25%. Are just like, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it, we ball. The more people would feel safe with Trump. I think I would. <laughs> I feel like he'd like swiftly strike a deal or nuke. Like, I just feel like he would take firm action. I, for a while, was convinced that Trump didn't know about outer space, which I was like, yeah, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think, think it like, I don't know it's, saw, wouldn't be like, on his radar until it was. And then I think he would like make some swift moves. I would be... I don't want either. How about that? You're in the 25% yeah, now. I'd rather. I thought this was a poll where you had to choose one or the other. I didn't realize you would be a 25% just opt out entirely Mary Cosby style. Mm. But if I ha- if you had to choose one, who would it be? You don't get to Mary Cosby it. If aliens were attacking us? Yeah. <laughs> I know your answer. What? Not Sleepy Joe. I mean, if aliens were like, we're here to annihilate and we're going to destroy all the cities in the world and like 
If Gen- it was inde- humanity. Independence Day vibes, who do you want stepping up to the podium <laughs> and taking action? Well, if aliens are attacking us, I'm sorry. That's like, no. This is what I have to hold on. This is what I have to think. If aliens are attacking us, we're fucked. We're done. There's no way we win because if they're if they have the technology to get here. They're going to kill us all. This is assuming that there is a chance of okay. winning. I'm telling you, the aliens have come. I don't know if come. would be good. I'm no, not you don't to... get to choose. You oh don't get God. to be 25%. Okay. It's one or the I... other. Marianne Williamson. <laughs> You're scared to say who, but you know, you know that you would not feel. Trump would be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. and um, But also he would be, let's be real. He would also be really shitty at it. Let's be real. He's yeah, not, but what would make president. you right off the bat just feel a little bit safer? <laughs> like, you know, you're kind of fucked either way, like you were saying, but there Actually, is a chance. I would say Biden because he has good. No, 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 no. Because he has more of the um, military industrial complex behind him and the corporations and like people who have all the power or like putting all their resources in Biden right now. And I think that the military would be more on Biden's side than Trump because the military kind of hates Trump because of like the coup. But I think Biden would have more. I don't think Biden would know that they were here. I'm yeah. talking more about what's behind Biden is Biden has the A military. more unified force. He has more him. unified force slash he's, a fake liberal so he like has he loves the military and like loves weapons Mm -hmm. so he'll yeah he would be better okay but trump yeah i get that but trump would be more fun to watch it'd be way more entertaining and like like, if you're gonna burn alive (laughs) in like a in a fiery pile of bones and just be like immediately snuffed out be it trump i guess it's like Let's lol on the way down. Yeah. For lol. If I knew that we were... Okay, here. How about this? If I knew there was a chance, Biden, and if I knew that there was no chance... Trump. And we were just going to go down and it'd be fun to watch the chaos, Trump. Okay. I like that answer. But Biden, let's be real. Like, he... The powers that be... Maybe they would Mr. just... Sleepy Joe. Maybe they would just, like, kill him immediately. And so then they'd be like, oh, he had a heart attack. Sorry. And then they'd be like... We're, gonna, we're we're in charge now. We're instating a military dictatorship. Yeah, I yeah. think they'd be like, "Oh my god, he slipped and fell again, but he went night night forever." And then they're like, "Well, there's since this is a super emergency, there's nothing we can do except just step I in saw, and take over." I saw <laughs> I heard audio of him on stage and he started trailing off and then it was a press conference and then all of a sudden you heard do do oh, do, I do, heard do, that. do 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 do, 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 do. And then he was, and then he was like, he went, where am I going? And someone went over here. And then they went, that's enough questions. Thank you so much. And jazz music played <laughs> him off. Really good. I was like, what? <laughs> it's theater of the absurd. It is. Mango, get over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Come here, come to that. Well, one is being willful. But I would, I think. Trump would be like, let's oh, get him. Yeah. Can you we imagine m- Trump talking to an alien? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I know, but I'm serious. I don't think Trump, I think Trump didn't perceive of like the sky. Other than like when he was like, what can I build that goes kind of up sky? Yeah. It's just not of his concern at the moment. He's really kind of just focused on what's right in front of him. Which is <laughs> not going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Should we talk about the other death. jailbirds? Yeah. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Salty Utah Ta- Queens. Um, I have to say this was a lackluster follow-up to arguably one of the greatest Housewife episodes in the last of few Of all years. time. Definitely over the last five years. I'm disappointed. It got kind of good at the end, but it it took a while. It took a long time. And I think riding high. Shot down. Shot down once again. I was also very much triggered by the like blanched overcast sunlight, filtered sunlight, complimenting their hangover. 
it really like I felt hung over watching this episode because I could feel I knew that they were feeling pain. I was asking myself, how is Heather alive? Yeah, Heather must have snorted some Vivans or something because I I don't know how she was doing that. I, I think it's be... a stimulant, like a hot shower. I don't know how she's upright. She's just maybe yeah. ate a burger first thing in the morning. Yeah, like I mean, a it's... huge. You need like the biggest plate of carbs and like grease. Or she just threw up everything she had and then was like fine. Because I used to like. I used to throw up before bed when I was drunk and mm-hmm. I would feel like not as hungover the next day. Yeah, maybe that's it. But it's um, a dark day in Palm Springs nonetheless. It's raining. And it's... to be her level of hungover in that motel. No, it's it's what we were for- fearing. Get it. And there's still another day left before you go home. Nightmare. Meredith's outfit is very... Hi there, children. Steve Buscemi meme. <laughs> She's wearing like a hoodie with a hat. She's eating caviar. Because she has a caviar brand now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Did you see the video Brooks uploaded to TikTok where he was like driving home from the Hamptons with my mother? Mm -mm. It's just clips of her, all the things Meredith is doing in the car. And she's just like talking to her lawyers. She's flipping through Hamptons magazine going, oh, look at them. That they look nice, honey. Oh, look at them, honey. They look so nice. And it's just like this really sweet of like a working mom. I want eyes on Meredith at all times. Mm -hmm. I fear she doesn't work well in like a cast of people. She is someone I would like to see what she can do solo Mm -hmm. or a Mark's family reality show. Married to the Marks. I would like to see more of Chloe and Brooks together. They're like, there's some, they're the three of them are an unstoppable force. They're like Dune. They're, they communicate without words. Lisa or Whitney texts Heather, are you alive in there? You hear Heather and you hear like things knocking around in the in toilets flushing. I was like. She's taking the biggest shit of her life. She also probably wet her bed. Let's be real. Do we think that she wet the yeah, van? Yeah. Multiple people have... My sister also said I think she peed. I know that was my first instinct, but then you were in a place of bile, so then I rethought I it. I thought that she was like... It was like that It was dripping up. down her... Yeah, and then I thought it was pooling like that, and then going. That like thick, viscous spittle that comes up when you're throwing up that much, and you get like... No, sp- babe, it was liquid. Yeah, it was a pet. She was pissing. Lisa goes to Whitney's room, and Lisa. lo and behold, I said, no, not a personal pizza. Lisa's spray tan is out of control. As someone who just experienced a spray tan for the first time, like Lisa looks insane. I thought she looked really good. I love that they're, this is their fresh first thing in the morning. They're going, good morning. They're in a full face of rouge and contour. Yeah, Lisa's eating a pizza. Well, Whitney's eating a personal pizza. Oh, she goes, oh, last night was crazy. And they're just talking shit about Meredith and how she's always like bringing up family dirt. Who and is this three-year-old that Meredith, like, I, I truly am confused on who this toddler is that is causing her so much grief. It's really, it's like not the time or the place. No, it's not. Know your audience. Yeah. This ain't it. It's true. <laughs> Lisa goes, not this again. Oh my God. <laughs> In regards to Meredith's threats of like revealing everyone's dark family secrets. Yeah. I mean, that is like, I think that's like a really shitty trend when you are someone that's like, I know I could say a l-. like, and there, I've met a lot of people like this who were like, I know then just fucking say it, say it bitch. What either shit say? or get off the pot. Say it to my face. What yeah. do you want to tell me? Just spill. spill if you want, like, it's a pussy ass bitch move to be like, I know everything. It's very attorney. Yeah, and it's threatening. She's like the Roy Cohn of the housewives. They really did peg her ass down, though. They're like, all you do is make up excuses of like random people's health problems that are devastating you, and then like threaten to spill tea that will destroy families and relationships. Maybe we never forget last season. I mean, that was like a full, that was like, I mean, it was hard what she was going through, but like she's every season, it was like her father, then her nephew. And then now this now mysterious, mystery toddler, like 
that's <laughs> tough, but enough is enough. What if the toddler is like a ghost that lives in their house <laughs> and haunts the Marx family? Meredith is always like, afflicted by these troubled souls. It's like, <laughs> get a grip. Get a grip. And just spill the beans already. Enough is enough. Makes me think that she doesn't have anything. She's just biding her she time. She just likes a threat. Finds... Mm-hmm. Um, it's tact. It's all just tactics to get people to back off, but they're backed up by nothing. They all assemble in one room. Well, Monica goes to Meredith's oh, right. room, and well, Meredith. First, hold on. First, Whitney goes. If today is not fun, then I'm going to fully take over. <laughs> Whitney's planning an insurrection. <laughs> Sorry, Monica. Then goes to Meredith. She goes to Meredith's, and Meredith goes. Thank you for being kind to me when not a lot of people were. And then they are talking and someone says something or Monica's telling her like everyone talking shit about her or when being, being like Angie was out of control for like saying that you were fake. Mm-hmm. And Meredith goes, well, it's slander. Monica's like on her knees a little with Meredith. She's, I'm she's swearing allegiance over Monica after this episode. Yeah, I was like, I'm done with her. You do not step to baby girl Lisa that way. Not on my watch. No, we're no, done. I don't love it. I hate it. I hate it. You're dead to me. You're dead to me, Monica. But I didn't like her. She's very much just. And then as she's like, Meredith, you're such an amazing person. Meredith goes like this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Heather pops out of her room. I'm shocked. She has a pep in her step. She snorted Adderall. I swear she blew by it. She turns to Whitney and she goes, sorry I threw up on your leg. I was like, she's doing the like, I know this dance yep. well. Me too. Of being like, I have to be one step ahead of the anyone. Ru- the the rumors and <laughs> nastiness about her. I miss Meredith's accent. I wish that it had security. Came. <laughs> security. This I am the hostess of this dinner. This her mid Atlantic. She's she goes, Well, no, sweetie, this is embarrassing for you. <laughs> I'm you can leave. You can leave. She, she was Mrs. Potts. <laughs> no, she was fully like turn she was like middle of the century, mid Atlantic, like Full on. She was Hepburn. She was Catherine Hepburn. She was wearing Cary Grant's house in Palm Springs. Security, security. security. Tell this woman, uh, this woman, her behavior is unacceptable. I'm the hostess of this dinner, and this woman needs to leave immediately. And then this waiter. They need to find that waiter. He needs a tell all. Needs- this is his moment to capitalize, and he could write at least one article. Remember when Bitch Sash called the uber driver that <laughs> took jen home from and that where jen switched ubers we gotta I get listen. the way we need to get the waiter on the pod we should find chad let's i'll look him up okay he's at uh what's it called again mr copley's we should just call that restaurant yeah. and be like is chad there i'm sure people have tried i wonder if it's open right now should we call yeah okay It's closed. It doesn't open until 5.30. Oh, should we leave a message? No. No, we'll we'll get in touch with Chad. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Meredith is trying to continue to keep her like reign over the group of this trip, but she knows it's slowly spiraling Slipping away from her. She's obsessed with horrible trust exercises. She goes, today we are going to see a man named Cliff. (laughs) And they drive out to like a field while it's raining. And then they, this was really bad. And I'm actually, I have to say my obsession with Mary has never been firmer. I'm just an absolute, like I will go in the van, but TBD if I'll (laughs) step out of it. I would watch a whole show of Mary not going into places. That's what it's become. They know that that's what we want. So they're (laughs) giving it to us. Like I'm appreciative of the Mary B storylines. Mary's van adventures. I think she's like really fun. She refuses to get out of the Sprinter van. She goes, I'm not, I'm not doing it. 
she goes, I know who to trust and who not to trust in this group. So I'm good. And no one, no one pushes her either. Not a single person. Also, Heather's like, I'm sorry. She's like lolling about the night before on the, when they're, she's like, we got it. We had, got, we had to get a new van because I ruined. And I was like, I'm taking you to rehab now. Well, the thing is, if you don't laugh about that, you're just so ashamed. So you have two choices. No, I know. But like, you I, have actually me. three. You have laugh about it and be on Vivance. Don't come out of your room. Don't come out of your room. Shame spiral. Suicide. Or go to rehab. Or no one talks about it. And it just weighs heavily on everyone's heart. And you silently torture everyone around you. And they rot from the inside out. So, so I think she's actually choosing the best <laughs> option. Everyone needs Alan on. Um, I've seen this lawn too. I know. I think I know where they are. I think they're by like the library or something. It's sick you know where, where they went. You know where it is, right? I don't know. This is really painting Palm Springs in a horrible light. Palm Springs. Yeah. Well, it's just the bat. The weather. Is, oh, it's just, the oh. only thing that's good to do in Palm Springs truly is go to the Parker Hotel and you stay there and do not leave, or you rent like a gorgeous house of the pool and and you stay there and do not leave but like at night and go to like those like misters venturing out is i've never i've never enjoyed like a venture out of the compound oh i I mean i love going out in palm springs at night like i love going to the arenas where all the gay bars are but it's not like during the day you don't leave you just you literally are just in the pool certainly not during the day but even i i would say once you hit the Parker, there's no reason to leave until checkout. Well, is all, no, all I'm of us are say. lucky to be there all the time. All the time I'm there. If you ever can't find me, <laughs> you're at yeah, the, I'm at, Chances channels. are I hold up at the Parker with Hotel a rotary, with a rotary phone by the pool. Going hello. I'll Goodbye. take a. I'll take a uh, lemon drop, please. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. I love if you can't always there. <laughs> never not there i literally have been but, there since but this is like this park thing is like this is it's sick it's bad it's sick and twisted um i'd be with mary i'd be like you and i can stay here the I'll vibes are also you. very like tuesday right it feels like a tuesday it's a really disgusting thing to make people do um i'm like i said hearing these instructions for said obstacle course i would like sword myself i would sapoko it's harikiri yeah yeah Meredith, they, he's like, here's a ball stick and we're going to pass it around. You can like tell each other what you wish you guys would do more of or something. And Meredith goes, I would like it if we could treat each other with kindness and respect. Okay. Good one, Meredith. And then honestly, in her one-on-one, Heather goes, We've destroyed marriages, careers. We sent one of our friends to prison. It's going to take a lot more than a trust exercise to like build it. I was like, this is me That's after like real. a group trip. Someone goes, how was it? Well, I go, well, we destroyed marriages, careers, and we sent one of our friends to prison. So all in all, a great, it was a great time. I'm in awe. I want Mary. Lisa to I to I want to blindfold myself and have Lisa tell me what to do from morning until evening. Lisa's instructing Monica. Turn left over here. Take six steps to the right. Take six steps. Angie now lift and, your foot up. Angie and Heather are getting along. Mm-hmm. Angie also comes out. They're they're all wearing shirts that Meredith got, but of course Angie didn't have one. So Angie makes her own shirt. Takes all tricks. To her own all no tricks. Trust. No trust. Angie. <laughs> Someone referred to her as Dracula recently. <laughs> Dracula? Who? Who said this? Alan texted me that someone said, just like said a reference to Dracula, but she wasn't sure who. And I was like, they're talking about Angie K. She is. She's she Dracula. Is Dracula. She's very vampire. No. Nope. She also has the biggest tits I've ever seen. Have you seen them? She's tits out. They're like mulch bags. They're <laughs> like giant. They are. They're bags. She's got a real rack on her. But she is very. She's Dracula five foot two. <laughs> <laughs> Dracula who is chronic illness. <laughs> Trauma triggered chronic illness. Um, 
Mary <laughs> continues to just like sit in the car and mutter about like why this looks really bad. And I'm like, I don't know, Mary. You're right. I don't know why they're doing this. She goes, why did Meredith take us to the park for this? Why couldn't she take us somewhere more luxurious? I'm like, that is actually a great point. You should bring it up with the producers of the show. You know what I would have done? I would have been like, you know, guys, the weather's really shitty. I booked us a spa and like we can just heal and we're gonna we're have all, girls spa day we're, we're i know we're all a little hungover like we'll just like relax get massages get facials and just steam i booked us a spa day at the parker yeah that would have been that would have been like actually bringing everyone together and they could have hung out in the indoor pool there yeah and heather could have like steamed out all her hangover like it it was this was a bad choice <laughs> i love it the producer mary and the producers beeline b plot gibbs and gibbs the Some producers the, are really a, a main character in this episode if we could just get mary a hot oat milk latte and she goes with a double shot i have to have it she goes i really need that i have to have it have to and have i was that. like she's a bit of a trenta girl she's a total trenta girl she doesn't sleep i love it she's kind of dracula like mm-hmm. lives in her own lives in a castle by herself um then after the trust exercise is over, they all gather back into the van and then people kind of start coming for Mary, namely Wheatney. She goes, Mary, <laughs> why did you come on a girl's trip with people you don't want to be with? And Mary gives her a look like, bitch, because I have to, because I'm on this show. I know the answer. The only answer is because I'm on a reality show and I'm getting paid to do this. Because I'm contractually bound to come on. Like she, that was, I love that Because we signed an agreement that yeah. said I have to get in the sprinter van, but I don't have to do activities. Mary, why did you come on this trip if you don't want to be with anyone in real life? She goes, I I wasn't ready to do that. She goes, let it go, Missy. Little girl. <laughs> Little girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get back and they're all eating. They have like a little buffet out at the Trixie. And <laughs> <laughs> Meredith goes, we have a special lunch set up. I'm so like, the this hotel would drive me. I know, you would. It's I can't it's, deal with it. Even from hate. afar. It's too much. It is too much. I want to be a fan and I wish I could be, I wish I could like muster up some sort of enthusiasm, but I simply can't. You know what it is too? And I think like things are turning into this. It's like an aesthetic that's really becoming prevalent. Mostly I think on the two Bravo shows that I watch consistently, it's Hotel Ziggy Vibes. And it's the zigification of hotels <laughs> on you know what it is? Bravo shows, and I have to take a stand. You're really, you're really right. It's very post pandemic. Like it's a, it's a post COVID. It's COVID like, brain. It, it would design. This would not happen unless there was a pandemic. What's up with that? We need an investigator to like me try and make sense of the madness. I'll go to Hotel Ziggy and investigate. But like, what, like? Why is this aesthetic emerging in the hospitality space? It's I, very Austin Powers, like swing in sixties, uh, and I don't, uh, I do not like it. Well, like the Ace Hotel in Palm Springs is kind of seventies, like the vibe, like the rooms are very like rock star, like on vacation, you know. They're kind of maritime. Yeah, or, but like they also have like the rugs and like it's shag it's a little but it's not chic. it's not no this is it's, it's like, not swinging six it's not zigified it's like mid-century but like purple and pink purple and orange people eater and ziggy is very purple pe- people eater every time i drive by ziggy i'm triggered because it's all young like 25 year old hot men in clusters and are, they're not gay they're straight it's like a place to see and be seen. It's like, it's truly the new Playboy Mansion. To like party amongst window air conditioning units. Mm-mm. Not on my watch. Speaking of Hotel Ziggy, Tom Sandoval has a new podcast coming out. And I'm going to listen. Honestly, I am too because he's so fucking dumb that like <laughs> hearing what mm-hmm. a person of his mental capacity and pers- world perspective has to say on any given topic. Like, I hope they talk about like history, science, 
like engineering. Like I want to know his opinion on every single facet of life. We were saying in a group, I said in this group text that Laura and I are both in that I feel like it's going to be the even stupider version of Dak Shepard's armchair expert podcast. I can just see it. What guests is he going to get? He'll get like, he will get guests. There will be guests. Do we think, He'll like, what guests. does he truly, what he brings to the table is so like, non eye rollingly brain dead. Like, it's no wonder Ariana stopped fucking him after a while. Wait, she fucking is an amazing dancer. Did she kill it on she DWTS? killed it. I watched a clip. I was like, oh my God. I feel like she could probably win. She's How is probably, Lele Pons? I, didn't, I just saw the Ariana clip, but I was like, she is like, she's turning it the fuck out. Yeah. I was really... She like, came to play. She came to play with a vengeance. The vengeance. I don't know. I love like the recreation of the revenge dress. As like her first look. I hope she goes far. Who got eliminated? I don't know anything about the episode other than this clip that my friend sent me. Wait, did you watch Special Forces? No, not yet. Oh my God. I have to. Is Tom on it? Yes. Is he like crying? Not yet. Tara Reid is on it. Black China? No. Yes. Brian Austin Green. No. Uh, Black China's on it? Jojo Siwa. Wait, JoJo Siwa and Black China are on the same show? Yes. That is major. This show is shot like cinema. It's wow. shot in like extreme Black HD. It's Black Hawk <laughs> Down extreme HD close-ups. And like the dialogue is giving. I'm wow. like, this show is a, a cinematic achievement. It's like Jarhead. It is kind of. Wait, isn't Black They China literally put now? bags over people's heads and like lead them around. Whoa. Isn't Black China religious now? Yeah, she's a born again Christian. She dissolved her fillers and found Christ. And deleted her OnlyFans? I don't know about that. Isn't she the highest paid OnlyFans? I'm excited. I hope that this leads her back into the Kardashian fold. <laughs> like, I hope that they, like, accept her she again. It's a Sunday service with Kanye. Mm -hmm. Wait, Julia Fox said that Kanye and her never fucked. Which totally I believe that is like a non. I believe it's like a non-sexual relationship, mm -hmm. but like makeouts and fashion, mm -hmm. I'd do it. It's gay as hell. I know. I like that. It feels safe. Um, so Meredith, we have a special lunch set up, and then Whitney during it, she goes, "Okay, I am taking over now. I have arranged my dear friend Trixie to come back to the hotel and judge us on our drag makeup." We so, are all going to dress up like Trixie. Cancel your glam. Cancel your glam. And now we will have a contest. And Lisa goes, but I flew glam in. And then this was a bridge too far for baby girl Lisa. Meredith is just going, she's so upset, silently disapproving. Lisa is fully like triggered. She, I've never seen someone more triggered. She was pushed to her very limit of what she could take i need to see her on special forces honestly she'd be great i think lisa envisioned trixie's like famously like insane makeup and she was so scared because lisa has a specific vision for herself every single day of her life at every moment she says she uses glam to go to the grocery store she's never without a lick of makeup although she was without makeup a few episodes ago yeah, like she, I've seen her go makeup free a couple times and like she looks great, but I'm I'm with her. I really don't like themed things. She's like, I really I don't like dressing up in like a costume. It's just like not for me. She's yeah, she's like I'm not doing this. I'm not doing drag. I'm not doing it. She's like, "No." She goes, "I pay 60,000 a year on glam." No. It's my fucking face. And so she goes into her I room. I have glam in Monaco. I have glam in Saint Tropez. Yeah, I <laughs> It was a. It was too far. We found her edge, and yep. the thing that she simp. She goes, "I am a team player. I have been a good sport, have I not? But I can't do it. It's my face." She goes, "I wore a fucking belly, a bangled skirt, and a bikini to a five star restaurant." And then Meredith goes, "She was being a good sport." 
And then she goes, I need to talk to the producers now. Come in here. Yeah. I have glam in Monaco. I have glam in Saint-Tropez. I'm having a conniption. <laughs> this is not okay. She goes, Morgan's flown in. I pay her $2,500 for this trip. No, she has to come. I'm not doing this. Question though. What? Why couldn't she just have asked Morgan to do her dra- makeup drag? She did. <laughs> I know. According to her, she did. But... I'm like, well, if Morgan's there, she could do like a really bold eye or like a bold lip. Listen, Lisa is a devout Mormon woman. And She's Lisa like, I also can't knew, be doing drag. Is that a Mormon rule? No, I'm kidding. Lisa did plan out all her outfits and her glam, so I get it. I stand with Lisa. She's fragile right now. She's like in she's like, I'm in this like terrifying motel. It's <laughs> raining out. I just did it. The walls are closing in. All I have is Morgan. She just did a... She's not with Daddy John. She just did an obstacle course, like, on a f- library lawn in the middle of, like, a Tuesday afternoon. Like, it's hell. It's Actually, hell Actually, yeah, there. she is in hell. I'm obsessed with her calling John and telling him about her glam trials and tribulations. She goes, <laughs> I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I, <laughs> I'm just dying. She goes... Uh, He's like, what's going on? And she goes, well, it's really fucked up, actually. Whitney said we have to cancel our glam. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. She pays 60 grand. Husbands having to listen to their wives talk about why they're so upset and they're literally going to commit sue over being told they have to cancel their glam is so pleasing to me. He goes, well, honey, one more day and you're back here. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. One more day and then I'm out of here. And then they come out and Trixie's going to judge. And she has her crown from when she won All Stars. And she's going to judge all the people. (laughs) Trixie goes, "Uh, not, I'm ready. Who's there? Come on. You just hear Lisa whisper in the background. I'm not ready. (laughs) Lisa comes out. I need Morgan. I need Morgan. I can't. She goes, Morgan, what are we going to do now? Morgan's like, we've got to just, they, we're going to just fix everything. So, uh, Whitney, Heather and Monica all come out like dressed like Trixie, Dolly Parton. Like they, they turn it out. I was um, into it. Monica has like a Jersey theme. Monica's gone a little dark on the spray tan. Yeah. It was a little it was like, questionable. Mm, keeping my eyes on that, Keep but monitoring. overall good for you. And then Lisa comes out and she's wearing... <laughs> She's just wearing the outfit she was going to wear that night. And has like maybe a little like pink. She's a tiny tad of purple eyeliner. Meredith also comes out just looking like Meredith She's with wearing, a pink eyeshadow. Wearing a blazer. I'm obsessed now. Mary has set an incredible precedent, which is that we can say no to the games. <laughs> and that I've been waiting for this moment. Like, COVID really ushered in an era of like the fun producers tell us, yeah, it ushered in fun and games era <laughs> and everyone just had to get on board. And I was like, when the fuck will this era be over? And single handedly, Mary dismantled that. And now the women are falling in line. <laughs> and saying- I love just being like, no, we're not going to do it. Well, yeah. It, like when COVID really like never before COVID did women were women like forced to do like, Maybe every once in a while there'd be like a game, but then they Bravo really took it to a place of like fucking potato sacks. And I'm like, I'm fucking done. We're adults. That is uh, insulting to the people involved and insulting to the viewers. And I get that you had nothing else seemingly that you could do, but fucking have a bonfire and give everyone alcohol like what else needs to be done all the women should have done ayahuasca in palm springs yeah i want to see that who is who truly like audience poll was there a big faction like is there a big like bravo q anon faction that's like nothing i love more than when the cast plays games yeah i think so and i think they all love like corporate retreats and like going to like it's ballrooms. like pickleball fans yeah it's like pickleball stands being like god i love like outdoor games mm-hmm. i ha- hate outdoor games i hate them with a passion i do not want to see them Me nor I, I like when people are forced to dress up i think it's kind of funny because then they fight in costume and that is a lull to me but i also am like you don't need to do that 
when the people, best shows don't need games. Like at like a summer party when people would be like, let's play football or like, let's play pickup. And I'd be like, no. Pickups. Why would I ever play Frisbee? Literally get away from me. I mm. never want to play games. No, I want to chill. I want to chill and like gossip. I want to sit by a fire or a hearth or like an outdoor fire or a pool or a body of water. And drink cranberry I would like to stay grounded. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. And maybe have a little drink. Never heard nobody. Um, a game. Monica won. Because, she, I mean, she committed. She, she was doing an accent. She but it was also York. like you couldn't not let her win. Yeah. I Whitney would have been my choice because I think she really turned it out. Mary goes, no one's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get, they're all like kind of. They're chatting about things in the van or they're chatting about something and like they start alert alluding to like Meredith and Lisa being wet noodles. And Lisa goes, if a wet noodle looks like pretty girl and head to toe Isabel Marant with good makeup, then yeah, I'm a wet noodle. Well, first she goes, she overhears a little bit of it. And then she comes over and she goes, what was the wet noodle comment in the van? She goes, what was that? What were you guys talking about there? What were you talking about? Wet noodles. What was the wet noodle conversation? And Monica's like, I just think that you like the, the, uh, requirement was drag and you didn't do that. And she goes, this is drag for me. I'm in drag. <laughs> <laughs> that is honestly, even next level is refusing to participate. And then when confronted about it, claim that you are indeed participating. I am drag. I this am, is my drag. I am LGBT. This, when you think about it, she is in drag every day. Yeah. She's a drag queen on her own. She doesn't need to dress up because she already presents she gets out of bed. She goes to bed, Lisa Barlow. She wakes up and gets ready and becomes Lisa Barlow. She wakes up every morning and goes, becomes the queen of Sundance. She goes, I love it. <laughs> this is drag. And then she and Monica start fighting. And then Lisa goes, Monica, you're the biggest bitch in this van. <laughs> Suddenly everyone's mad at Monica because Monica goes, you know what, Lisa? I was very triggered by that ring conversation because God. it's just very un it's like very tone deaf and then lisa goes oh god okay <laughs> i honestly stand with lisa i'm like monica you are yapping like an annoying little yorkie you shut up little girl do more of this less of this have some respect this is the queen of sundance this is lisa barlow <laughs> for you she lost a ring she's been through trauma and you're sitting here trying to call her out. I also love that she calls Lisa Barlow the 1%. Yeah, I was like, okay. Bitch, you need to Google that. We're, you guys, y'all live in, yeah. I don't think of Lisa Barlow, I don't think any of the housewives, I don't think of any of them as being in the 1%. Except like Carol Radswell. Yeah, I think like Sonia Morgan was married into the 1%, but then she was out, so she was no Kyle. longer 1%. Maybe yeah, no. I love she goes Monica Adrian goes Malouf. Honey No she goes okay sorry Sorry I was talking about Adrian Malouf Yeah one percent I thought I think of one percent as being the billionaires or the one percent. I think anyone with like fifty mil or over is like pretty one percent what is like the definition of the one percent i think nowadays though one percent is like if you have like a million dollars they're like if you have <laughs> more than a hundred dollars in a savings account you're in the one yeah i mean things are that <laughs> dire come on okay but i want to know like what is the internet oh i don't i don't fucking know well google it all right you got a phone no you're looking at it An annual salary of at least 597000 Damn. 99% okay. of earners in the U.S. make less than 500000 a year. So. Wow. Maybe she is in the 1%. Yeah. I think anyone who's like, Ma has, I think she probably has a couple million dollars. What's her net worth? 
Where's Mango? Eyes on him? He's just chilling over here. Okay. He just winked at me. <laughs> he did. He goes. <laughs> he loves you. I love him. Her net worth is around to be five mil. <laughs> One percent it is. And that's not counting John, Daddy John's Barlow. She goes, I understand the middle class. I am middle class. I love the middle class. And Monica goes, middle class people don't have a $60,000 ring. And Lisa goes, yes, they do. <laughs> she goes, they do have it. <laughs> yeah. So they, they pull up to like the gay club and they go to go inside. And then Mary just doesn't go in. And I was like... She goes, you let me know if I'll like it or not, she but goes, I probably won't, so I'm going to stay here. She goes, Tamara, send me a signal. <laughs> I love a lightly homophobic queen. <laughs> it's important. I love that. It's better I, for her. You know what you like, you know what you don't like. She doesn't like games, and she doesn't like gays, <laughs> so she's staying in the van, and she's going to go to McDonald's. But her not like... This is like the, the send biggest Send me a secret. signal. Her not liking gays makes her more of a gay icon than someone who's like... Wait, we have to talk about Heather. the <laughs> what? The meme of like that huge puppet, like life size, like know. taller puppet. So <laughs> it said on Twitter, they said this looks like Mary on this is Mary from Ro- Roll Sick, and then she responded to their tweet. And she was, "I love this. Thank you so much." I think she thought someone made a like sh- there was a float of her in a parade. I think she was like, oh, of course. I'm obsessed with her. She's like, yes, I'm God. Yeah, so I love of, it. Of course there'd Thank be a parade to me. Wait, I also am a little bit pissed that no one had Lisa's back in the van. Laura, no one is... When there's an opportunity to squash our girl, everyone will take it because she is the fan favorite. Everyone's I was looking at Meredith hater. like, where the fuck are you right now? She's not going to go in. All of these women are jealous of Lisa because celebrities like her that's what it is they it's it's all based on like whoever the fan favorite is they're excited to see they're them excited get... to see them get poo-pooed on and rihanna likes lisa barlow so people are pissed lisa barlow for fenty i love fenty, it i love it middle Fashion class me. people do have sixty thousand dollar rings. <laughs> i love, I love goes, the middle i love the middle class yeah she goes this morning she goes Wait, you don't think I can relate to the middle class? <laughs> I can, 100%. I have the clip. <laughs> oh my God, I can so much. Hold on a minute. Middle class America. I do 100%. 100%. I want Lisa, she should honestly run for president in 2024. I want Lisa to do like a Susie Orman style, like type of show where she's just talking about finances. She'd be, I would follow what she says to do financially. Mm-hmm. Make a savings account, high yield savings account with interest. You're going to want to look for three to 5% interest and put a little bit of money in there every month. Start small. It's important to start small, but then bump up to 20 when you can and you will. When you get to a point where you can do 20 and you will, like she would be really (laughs) soothing about it. She's like, get at least five lawyers when you can. Surround yourself with lawyers at all times. Treat them better than your close friends because they are the only people you can depend on. You're going to need five to seven lawyers on rotation. Whenever something happens, call each one of them. See what they have to say. Have your lawyers on retainer. Make sure they don't work for anyone but you. There are only a few people you can trust in this world. Your lawyers, anyone who signs an NDA, and John Barlow. (laughs) (laughs) And Jack. And Jack, but not Henry. Who knows where he is? He decided to go on a mission. He didn't tell us about it. No, that's Jack. Henry's the little one who's like killing animals, I think. Henry's the one who's going to take Fresh Wolf to new heights. Mm -hmm. Henry's the lost child. Can we get eyes on Fresh Wolf? Like, what's the the haps with that right now? What's the haps? So, you don't think I can relate to middle America? She goes, oh my God, you don't think I can relate? Oh my God, I so can. Middle class, 100%. 100% I can. Oh my God, I do. 100%. I love it. 100%. It's just when such a New York accent. When they have class accent. conversations on the show. Yeah. And I loved her being like, what? You're going to come for me? You have a $5,000 handbag from Louis Vuitton. Which I think she knows is also fake. Yeah. And I think in this moment, like she's good. I kept waiting. I was, cause I was also like, 
the if Monica knew what was good, she would have been like, yeah, it's fucking fake. And like had said it then because that would have been the real coup of like, I'm trying to keep up. I'm not materialistic. Like blah, blah, blah. I still die on the hill that it's fake. It is fake. You're the biggest bitch in this van. Oh, Monica, you're such the biggest bitch in this whole van. I love her going, <laughs> you don't think I can relate to the middle class? I can 100%. 100%. Imagine- Lisa could run against any candidate and win. Yeah. Have her run against Trump and she'll beat him. She could run against Joe Biden and win. You don't think I can relate to the middle class? I so can. I can 100%. He's the biggest bitch in this debate. He's the biggest bitch on stage and everyone knows it. (laughs) Meredith and Whitney are talking and Whitney goes... I do think that there seems to be a trend whenever you are faced with conflict. It's either something this or sister-in-laws, cousins, neighbors, three-year-old. And then you see Meredith go, don't you dare. (laughs) Don't you dare. She goes, you are a monster. You're You're a monster. Monstrous woman. I'm You're going a there. Monster. I'm I going am, there. I am indeed going there. I'm going there. <laughs> she goes, I'm going there. She goes, don't <laughs> you. It's very, no. No. It's Beetlejuice. Don't you even go there. You. You, you are a monster. You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do it. <laughs> Life. Meredith stalks over to the bar. To get a drink. I need a martini. And then Mary cuts to Mary and she's like, can we, can you take me to McDonald's? Pretty please. And she goes to McDonald's. She gets a fucking mukbang worth of food. I know. I was wondering, is this, is this like, do they get drunk food for everyone? Or do you think she brought like the producers, whatever they wanted? Yeah, maybe. She's, she got a haul. She's God. She can get whatever she wants. I'm obsessed. And she goes, yay. Mm. She gets the McDonald's. Meredith is at the bar bitching and moaning about Angie Kay and Wheatney. And she goes, I've got one coming at and yapping at me like a pit bull. And the other one. And then Angie Kay goes, excuse me. Excuse me. And I have to say, I'm a little bit over Angie Kay at this point. Well, Angie just like, she's, she's wearing, first of all, she's wearing a lime green wig. With her own hair coming out underneath it. And then Meredith says the pit bull thing, and then Angie sticks her face into the, between <laughs> Meredith and Monica, and she goes, "She goes, did you just call me an animal?" And then Meredith goes, "Anyway, what, like I was saying, she goes, I can't, I just, I cannot." And then ignores Angie K. She does. She says, "She goes, well, you look like a trampoline with a mouth, a trampoline with eyes, a trampoline with eyes." What does that mean? Like her face is pulled too tight. Maybe. I was like, I was like, yeah, say more about that. But I was also like, I'm not one to comment. I don't want to comment on anyone's appearance, but like, Angie, you're one People to in talk. glass houses. Don't you dare. Don't start throwing stones, Miss K. Meredith, when she says the trampoline comment, she goes, ha, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> and then Lisa comes out of nowhere and she goes, what's going on? And Angie goes, she just called me a pit bull. And then Lisa goes, who did? <laughs> What's going... Actually, this episode was kind of fun. It was, actually. Who called... Who, what happened? What's going on right here? She just called me a pit bull. Who? Who? Meredith. Why? Why did you do that, Meredith? <laughs> Lisa's always a little late to the, to the conversation. She is. What's this wet noodle conversation? Who's a wet noodle? Who's a wet noodle? What's going on? She knows. A trampoline with eyes. Interesting. I'm trying to still like figure out. It, I can't like anthropomorphize a trampoline. It's kind of funny on its own. Just the the like hearing it is like makes me lull a little. It's a funny burn, but I can't like picture what that looks like. It's kind of like when 
on First Wives Club when the pastor says, if I pull you up any farther, you're going to be able to blink your lips. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, it felt almost in it that is like, And Meredith goes, oh, oh, wow. Okay. And then they all just kind of like yap at each other some more. Well, then someone, I think, was it Angie that calls out Monica for being like, you were friends with Jen? Yeah, and then Monica starts to be like, don't start with me, dead ass," Because she says <laughs> she knows all the secrets. What? Everyone's threatening. And then next week, they're, it's, someone's going to spill a rumor about something. About Angie Kay and her husband. I feel like, at first I was like, oh, is it he's gay? And then I was like, you can't really use that as like a scandal anymore because it's like... Everyone's gay. Everyone's gay, but that's also like, t- it feels like kind of tone deaf to, on Bravo. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if it's some sort of like crime thing, like Greek crime syndicate, like in The Lost Daughter. I wonder what like Reddit people are saying about it. Like what are the fan theories of like who, what's good? I'm just one of my biggest, I'm so traumatized by housewives of of your like threatening secrets and then never sharing them. And I'm really burned and I feel like, traumatized by it and i'm like if you're not gonna tell me please don't even utter it because then i'm like like still i'm still traumatized by aspen still traumatized. yeah i don't want to get my hopes up for anything because now at any point there could just be a refusal or a bending to the will of those who don't want to be aired out kathy hilton's one percent definitely but yeah i, I because of that, I'm like, I'll never forgive the network for not giving us Aspen mm-hmm. and not seeing Faggate. So I can't. And then firing Lisa Rinna, who did the Lord's work, truly an investigative journalist of the ages. Speaking of, did you, so I guess Denise Richards' daughter is like kind of a thing now. On OnlyFans? I heard who we were talking about her. Yeah. Yeah, she started an OnlyFans, and then Denise started an OnlyFans. So they're like dueling OnlyFans. Gypsy Rose. <laughs> um, what's she up to? She just they were, <laughs> they were. Bobby and Lindsay played a clip of her talking about how she has to quit dueling because she's getting a tit job. Mm. And she's like, I'm, I'm really like, I'm scared to quit, but I know I should because it's ultimately it's like a good excuse to quit. And her voice, she sounded like Charlie Sheen, and it freaked me out. <sighs> That's intense. She's 19. She's yeah, she's young. I mean, cool. Good for her. You got to do what you got to do, I guess. She's making enough money, right? Yeah. I think she probably cleans up. I don't even think she shows areola. Just hints. I think she just is like, I'm topless, but you can't see. And then maybe she'll show tits on OnlyFans eventually. Are Denise and Aaron like fucking on their OnlyFans? I don't know. Let's see. I would like to watch that. No, I'm still also again. I'm still. I feel kind of robbed that we didn't get the oh yeah big pharma like conspiracy. Well, maybe now. Yeah, we will get it because she's back. She's coming back. Yeah, no. she's back on the show. Are you kidding me? That's why Rinna was fired, or Rinna left, or was to fired, and that's the only way she said she'd come back is if Rinna wasn't on it. So we're gonna Holy get her back. Shit! I am so happy. Oh my god, that's like the best news I've heard all week, other than the strike ending. Do you want to hear some other great news? Sure. Is that Denise Richards reportedly earns two million a month on OnlyFans? We should I mean, start at OnlyFans. She deserves it. Yeah. Two million a month? Mm-hmm. Two million times how many months in a year? Twelve. Twenty-four mil a year. That's not including all the other money she's making. Yeah. Which I think she makes a good amount from... From what? Her, like, little movies that she does. Her husband shoots a lot of her OnlyFans content because he knows what guys like. Sick. He's like her pimp. 
it's great for him that she's on only man god he really banked out in that relationship wow let's see how denise's net worth these days wow 24 million dollars net worth no making i mean that's insane i know anyway maybe i need an only fans dorinda has one does she show a hole <laughs> what if dorinda was like <laughs> what if dorinda is making just like fucking <laughs> x-rated content on only fans like putting like pool balls up her just like taking like stretching oh my god get it like what Gate. if she's on what does she do she just gets drunk and like tells stories i think so it's like basically having a patreon i think for some people yeah but sonia has one i think i know i don't know if she still has it but i know she made one during covid i need to now sign up and figure out Maybe, did I sign with Google? I swear I had an OnlyFans, like, account. To look at people's? To look at people, because there was one guy that I wanted to look at. (laughs) Okay, yeah, I am in. Okay, Denise Richards. Wow, someone has just an OnlyFans where she's, like, introducing people to her new horse. And she makes money? People will pay for anything. She's like, come ride my horse with me. She makes money? I guess so. I mean, this is like the... Damn. Wow. Okay. I'm going (laughs) to really start thinking about some things. Men are ready to pay is what I'm learning. And women. Mm Mm-hmm. I know I need to capitalize on my lesbian fans. Yeah, you need to like <laughs> lean into that a little more. But okay, is, we'll watch the space. You don't have to do. Any, you just have to just be like. Maybe in a little people, push-up bra. People, I swear, will pay if you just go on and go like this. People will pay like twenty a month for you to just go. Go. <laughs> people will pay anything on the internet. I know it's great. Okay, well, Stay th- things percolating. Maybe twenty twenty four is. The year I launch OF. OnlyFans. Yeah, I go Lars full Marie OF. at OF.com. Mm-hmm. Com. Well, let's see. Um, so we'll we'll stay tuned for next week. They're stay out tuned. of the fucking desert. Finally. Thank God out of that hotel. My God. And with love and light. We'll we'll see about the squad goals thing. What is it called? Fleet Space Fleet. Death Squad. The reality show where they're in the desert. Special forces. Special forces. You should <laughs> squad goals. We'll see about squad space fleet death squad or special forces. Just watch an episode. I mean, I, I wanted to watch ever since I saw that clip of Jamie Lynn Spears falling backwards out of the helicopter. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're all like falling off of cliffs and stuff. Tara Reed also is like doing physical comedy. I mean, she's really struggling as one can imagine. Yeah. There's a oh, scene, God. there's a scene where they find out that she has cigs on her and they're like, weird. You have contraband. They like sidebar and they're like, get over here. Number 24 or whatever her number is. I think she's number two, actually and like number two over here. And she runs up, She's like harrowed she and she's, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we are, you have contraband. What's in those pockets of yours? And she's like, Oh, I have c- cigarettes. And then she takes out two packs of Marlboro lights and like hands them to the guy. And he goes, is that it? And she goes, no. And then gra- goes in another pocket and pulls Damn, them out. She's ripping. Six. She's ripping. Six. Wow. But I think it's going to end up being like a good season for her. Yeah. Like, I think, I don't think she'll win, but I think she'll learn a lot. Oh my God. We have 19. 19 Colts? Yeah. (gasps) Moving in time. Jeffrey Pratima. Pratima, Pratima, Pratima. Kim Lucas. Lucas. Emily. Emily. Nick Sedaris. Sedaris. Kit Moore. Kit Moore. Rochelle Martino. Tino. Kathy West, yes. Mariah Kay, Mariah Kay. Owsley, Owsley, Carrie Whitmer, Carrie Whitmer, Courtney Kesselman, Kesselman. Sharon Baum, Realtor, Realtor. Mike Earhart, Earhart, Maisie McKearney, Maisie McKearney. Mary, Mary. Mary. Mazatov, Ladies Swamp, which Ladies gives no fucks. fucks, 
Danielle McMillan, Dylan. and Lucy from London. Lucy from London. We've got a we've got a UK. No Nick Sedaris. No Nick Sedaris. I said him. Oh, you did. Yeah. Le- <laughs> Welcome from over the pond. Oh, Welcome. hello, come, Cheerio. Come on, come on. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. Goodbye.